now we'll be starting with the example sessions that we have under judiciary okay so let's just directly begin with it which is the highest court in india as always i'll give you some time to think about it and then um, i'll tell you what the answer is which is the highest court in india district court high court supreme court tehsil court right so the answer is supreme court right so this is the order basically you have the supreme court first supreme court and then you have what do you have after that high court and then what do you have after that district court so then if you have supreme court first and then high court and then district court then what about the tehsil court where does the tehsil court come um it's a question to you try answering right so basically the tehsil court is the same i'm not sure if you have answered the tehsil court is just another name of the district court okay it's just another name in which you call it the district court now if the tehsil court is another name of the district court what is yet another name of the district court there is yet another name that the district court has again i'll give you some time right so the other name is i believe subordinate court so you have district court subordinate court tehsil court all of these are names of one single court subordinate district tehsil okay moving on which level of court handles a wide range of civil and criminal cases at the district level you have high court supreme court district court tehsil court high court supreme court district court tehsil court the question is which of these courts handle a wide range of civil and criminal cases at the district level okay the answer is actually pretty much evid evident in the question but yeah your time starts now okay so the answer is district court why because it's pretty obvious it's given here at the district level right so it's pretty obvious that the answer will in fact be district court so which level of court handles a wide range of civil and criminal cases at the district level district court okay moving on which branch of law deals with offenses like theft and dowry criminal law civil law constitutional law administrative law which of these deals with oh there's something i forgot to do i'll do it after this question which branch of law deals with offenses like theft and dowry criminal civil constitutional administrative your time starts now right so it is criminal civil constitutional administrative for offenses i mean this keyword has been given i mean ideally they should not be given this keyword they should have just said you know with things like theft and dowry but this this makes it even easier for offenses the law that deals with it is criminal law i'll just take you through where we had learned it different branches right so criminal law is what the deals with conducts or acts that the law defines as offenses and these are some examples of offenses theft harassing dowry murder all of these are examples of offenses okay so yeah so the thing that i forgot is usually when when i start example classes i just take you through a recap of the theory that we learned right we forgot to do that no worries we, i'll just do it now and then we'll continue with the questions so this is what we had in the judiciary first we had just a basic definition and then we moved on to the role of the judiciary we studied um four things interpreting and applying the law safeguarding individual rights ensuring the rule of law judicial review and then we moved on to independent judiciary we looked at the we just looked at what it means to have an independent judiciary and then we looked at the structure of courts in india basically three levels district high and supreme uh and then some things uh, pertaining to those and then we moved on to different branches of the legal system criminal law and civil law then we moved on to access to courts then criminal justice system and we looked at the role of the police in investigating a crime and then we looked at article 22 of the constitution uh then we looked at dk basu guidelines first information report role role of public prosecutor 
you know all different things uh, different topics and then we looked at the role of the judge where we had eight roles no sorry four roles it's under fair trial that we had um, eight laws or rights okay under the role of the judge just four roles uh, four roles um, impartial adjudication interpretation of law decision making safeguarding procedural fairness under fair trial equality before the law right to legal representation presumption of innocence open and public trial um, and then also right to a speedy trial right to confront witnesses and cross-examination right against self-incrimination and right to an impartial judge this is all of those rights that we learned under the fair trial and this is all that we had under judiciary i think compared to union in ex sorry compared to executive and legislature you might feel like there is more theory in judiciary but still it's less compared to the chapters on constitution anyway moving ahead which branch of law dispute uh, handles disputes related to the sale of land rent matters and divorce cases criminal civil constitutional administrative i'll give you some time right so disputes related to sale of land rent matters and divorce cases the branch of law that deals with all of this is civil law i mean here we had criminal here <laughs> it's civil i mean see we just have mainly two cases of when we talk about law it's mainly just two things that we are talking about at this stage just criminal and civil so it's definitely not constitutional or administrative it's not something that you guys have to learn at this stage okay so here so basically that's the difference i mean if you don't remember the difference between civil and um, criminal criminal is basically relating to offenses and civil is you know such disputes you can have where it's like two people have a difference in opinion and sort of end up in a fight so they need to go to somebody who can fix it for them right Offen criminal law is pretty uh, pretty clear somebody does something which is an offense which is illegal so you take that person to court okay moving on under which article of the constitution a person has the right to be defended by a lawyer article 21 22 23 24 i mean out of all of these four numbers mentioned we have only studied about one number uh, article so it's pretty easy but yeah anyway right so the answer is article 20 where have we learnt it? I'll take you. Was it before access to? Yeah. It was under the criminal justice system that we learned that according to article 22 of the constitution, every person has a fundamental right to be defended by a lawyer. And then we also had 39A, which basically placed a duty upon the state to provide a lawyer to any citizen who is unable to engage one. Okay, so that's article 22 and article 39A. Moving on. Which among the following does not play a key role in the criminal justice system? Public prosecutor, judge, neighbors, defense lawyer. Out of these four, which does not play a key role? Okay, here, yeah, this is an example where not is given, but it's not capitalized. I think we saw that in the ex um, legislative, yeah. I think for the example in the legislative, when not was mentioned, it was capitalized. But here it's not. So you need to be very careful. Um, you might see this and you might people have a very big tendency to forget words like not so you might think okay this is about playing a key role in the criminal justice system right so which is why i always uh, i've said this before also about underlining you know when you see important points underline so similarly when you see something like a not underline it twice because it is that important so one is this overall underlining and one just underline it once more because it's not and you need to remember it's the negation of what you need to find okay anyway Public prosecutor, judge, neighbors, defense lawyer. Your time starts now. Who does not play a key role in the criminal justice system? Right. It's a pretty obvious answer because you see neighbors here, right? I mean, neighbors do not play a role in the criminal justice system. So, <laughs> um, I mean, it's a pretty obvious, even for somebody who has no idea, all of these seem like, you know, very serious words. 
and neighbor obviously you know they they should not be playing a role in the criminal justice system unless you know your neighbor is a judge or a public prosecutor obviously don't take such cases into consideration but you can sort of guess that it's not going to be neighbor so yeah neighbor is the answer that was a fun question moving on which of the following is an important function of the police to investigate any complaint of crime to drag the criminal to court to grant bail to innocent to collect the sample at a crime scene so four of these are actually functions of the police but they've asked for important functions so whatever you feel is the most important okay um, your time starts now Right. So the answer is to investigate any complaint of crime. Why? Because see, a way to look at it is that see, when you talk about police, one of their major function is what? This right to investigate a complaint of crime. If somebody asks what is the important function, which of these would you say first? To drag the criminal to court? No, that's not. I mean, so when you say that to drag the criminal to court, you're making it feel as though as a police officer, the function of that person is just dragging criminals to court. No, that's that's not just what police officers do, right? They do many other things. They need to investigate the complaint first, find out what happens, and then may or may not drag the criminal to court. But when you talk about if somebody asked for like one important function of the police of these four, so that, that's a that's a good way to look at such questions. Just think if you were asked for one important function of the police and you had these four options, which of these would you say? this no to grant bail to innocent i mean obviously it would be nice if the police uh, did that but it's not the only thing that they should be doing right so um, again not granting bail to innocent to collect the sample at the crime scene again see that is something that the police should do they should be collecting crime uh, they should be collecting uh, samples at the crime scene but is that the only thing they should be doing no so it's not at this one either Okay, so that's a good way. So when you're asked about important functions and you can't decide, just think. You have these four things. You are asked in an interview. What should a police do? Out of these four options, which one would you say first? Which one do you think covers most things? Which one do you think makes most sense? Which one do you think is the most important thing for a police officer to do? And that answer will be a right answer. That is a trick to deal with questions like this. Okay, moving on. Who is subjected under the rule of law? Rule of law. Police, persons, both A and B, none of the above. Okay, I'll give you some time. Again, this is a pretty obvious uh, answer. Right, so who is subject under the rule of law? It's basically... Is it the police? Is it the person? It's actually both of them. Both of them, both the police and the people are subject under the rule of law. Okay, so uh, basically, what do we mean by rule of law? This is something I've explained multiple times before. So you should know this by now. If you don't, I'll just explain to you, not a problem. Basically, what we're saying is that um, you actually get this answer from the definition of rule of law. It's that nobody is above law. May it be the president of India, the prime minister of India or a poor person or just a normal citizen. Nobody is above law is what we mean when we say rule of law. Okay. So everybody is at the same position. Nobody is above anybody is what we essentially mean when we say rule of law. Um, and yeah, so who is subjected under the rule of law? Both A and B. Moving on. What mechanism was devised by the Supreme Court in the early 1980s to increase access to justice in India? Okay. Alternative dispute resolution, ADR, public interest litigation, pill, mediation and arbitration, legal aid services. Your time starts now. Right. So basically, to increase access to justice in India, the mechanism that was brought is the public interest litigation bill. This was the last topic we studied in the first theory session that we had. 
where is it where is it no i think it's after all of this mm. yeah well, this was the first page i took so i was right i just did not find this so basically um uh, Supreme Court, in response to legal procedures taking a lot of money in paperwork, devised a mechanism of public interest litigation or PIL to increase access to justice. So this was a mechanism that was devised to increase access to justice. Okay, so why was this devised? Basically, you know, legal procedures, they take up a lot of money and paperwork, right, and also a great deal of time. So this was devised in response to that money and paperwork that will be taken. Um, so basically what you have here is, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'll just highlight this also. Legal procedures involve a lot of money and paperwork as well as take up a great deal of time. This is why you had the public interest litigation or pay. Okay. Um, So this is in a way increasing access to justice in India, right? Okay, how is that increasing access to justice in India? The issue was that legal procedures take up a lot of time and that people might not always be able to access lawyers. When you get rid of those issues, people get their justice. People are granted justice earlier, right? So that's how in a way their, it's their, their access to justice is being increased. Which of the following is not a means for people to approach the courts in India? Okay, of these four, which is not a means, again here no, not has been capitalized, so you'll remember, but yeah, a, in either case, when you see questions with not, just sort of like underline it, okay, not so many times, just, <laughs> just underline it once, um, okay, which are, okay, I'm very bad at this, let me try to, pray to God. Which of these is not a means for people to approach the courts in India? Filing petitions, engaging lawyers, public interest litigation, pill, legal awareness campaign, campaigns. Your time starts now. Basically, we have learnt about all three of these. Just think, just look at one that we have not learnt in this chapter and you have the answer. right so the answer is which of the following is not a means for people the answer is legal awareness campaigns you have studied about all of these you know people can file petitions they can engage lawyers and then pil is something that we learned about just now right so legal awareness campaigns i mean you can have legal awareness campaigns for certain reasons but it's not a way in which you approach courts to approach courts there is a designated system that we have and you must follow that particular designated system Moving on, which of the following guidelines is laid by Supreme Court requiring police and other agencies to follow for arrest, detention and interrogation? DD Basu guidelines, DK Basu guidelines, Rang Rajan guidelines, VK Rao guidelines. I mean, looking at two options, you can get the answer. But yeah, your time starts now. Right. So the answer is DK Basu guidelines. Um, this this is a guideline that was laid by the Supreme Court requiring police and other agencies to follow for arrest, detention and interrogation. Where have we studied about this? Yes. Basically, procedures that you need to follow for arrest, detention and interrogation. Supreme Court of India, who sets these rules? It's the Supreme Court. These are known as the DK Basu guidelines and we also looked at one guideline. Basically, they should wear clear, accurate and visible identification and name tags with their designation. That was one of the DK Basu guidelines, right? So, uh, right. So, the other way of, you know, just getting this answer is, you see this very similar DD Basu, DK Basu. Why would they have given this? Is probably to confuse people, right? Because you might know there's some kind of Basu, but is it DD or DK? So this would have been given to confuse people. So you can just guess that it would be one of these. And you might remember, okay, we have studied DK Basu, so then you know it's DK Basu. So even if you don't know for sure, 
you know that these are similar so you can just sort of guess that it will be one of these moving on what are the basic junctions of criminal justice system policing adjudication corrections all of these your time starts now this is sort of from your understanding of the criminal justice system uh, it's not specifically given uh, you'll just get get it from your understanding of what you have learned right so the answer is all of these okay so police uh, policing we know basically you know making sure that more um, things happen as expected and there is nothing wrong going on things like that adjudication like i explained to you before passing formal judgment as to you know what is right and what is wrong is what comes under adjudication and then you have corrections and all of these so all of these come under the basic junctions of criminal justice system so the answer is all of these okay um, and yeah, that's what we have under judiciary. We are done with both the theory and examples of judiciary. So we are officially done with all three organs of the government. We had executive, which we completed. Uh, then we had legislature, which also we completed. And now we are also done with judiciary. So we are done with this part. Now the next chapters that you will be learning in... Um, what chap what is our subject civics right so then next chapters that you will be learning in civics will be about um things like you know constitutional bodies non-constitutional bodies elections um marginalization public facilities things like that that's what you have in store we have in store for you next um right so this was all that we had in the judiciary hope it has been a good chapter so one thing that you will have noticed is that the questions from judiciary are generally easier when you compare with the theory that you have under judiciary, all of these things, you know, introduction, role, independence, structure of courts, different branches, access to courts, criminal justice system, role of the police, um, and then you have role of other things also, public prosecutor, article 22, um, right, the role of judge also, you have it later on here. And then DK Basu guidelines, uh, where is it? Yeah, DK Basu guidelines, FIR, just, just a lot of, you might feel like, you know, okay, there's a lot of information, fair trial, there's a lot of information to intake, but the questions that are asked from judiciary usually are fairly easier compared to the content that you have in judiciary. So in that sense, it's an easier chapter, I would say. Um, anyway, so we're done with our chapter judiciary.